disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? Let's no. Go. They suck. Versus I've been telling you all season, they Philly. They shit on you. Oh. They shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me? You're in the like they shit on you. Oh. They shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't don't you hear me, Jordan? Uh, Caleb Carter, it's like they shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness! Did he say they they cock it on them? Eight the style defense. I well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up those football gods. You could be anywhere right now, and I'm so thankful that you are here. We have now crossed over 85,000 of you guys and i want to thank each and every one of you for being here which makes me not get tired from the work no 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 this motivates me to do even more hope you tune in five o'clock eastern today as we have our channel members being able to call in and be part of the show we'll be talking about the shit storm that is the dallas cowboys as well as a little bit of super bowl you know it's kind of crazy because this is super bowl week Sorry, 49er fans. We ain't into you. We ain't been talking about you. It's been all about the Dallas Cowboys and their dysfunction. And it's just getting crazy. You know, the I think the turning point for me was hearing D-Law basically saying we were tired. I, I, I just literally, uh, yeah, I, I was sitting here laying in bed this morning and talking to my wife, and I'm like, this offseason has been crazy. I said, you know, I said, everybody is pissed off. And she's like, still? I said, listen, I said, it just keeps getting worse. I said, you know, I said, let, I said, let me ask you, honey. You know, I said, I, I said, if you heard this as an excuse for why you lost, I said, we were tired. She looked at me like, the fudge? She's like, wait a minute. He didn't. She, he he didn't really say that, did he? I said yes. He did. I said yes. He did. She's like, oh. She's like, boy, that that's not the thing to say. Your job is to be the best team that you can. And so when you open yourself up, and the Cowboys, I'm hoping that this is the walk of shame for them. That that this is the way that forces you to change because see here's the thing if you don't want people to talk about your failures then don't fail don't fail if you don't want to get the blowback and the negativity to win the game you don't lose to the seventh seed at your house when you them boys can't blame it on the weather can't blame it on injuries you just didn't show up. And Stephen A. on Micah's podcast, you know, I'm, I'm still, it's still something about football today. I, I know when you get old, when you get old, um, you remember the movie, I'm going to get you sucker. You know, when you, uh, I, I'm going to get you sucker, okay? The guy's in jail, Superfly, or whatever his name was. He gets out of jail. He's got his Superfly hat on. He's got his platform shoes that got goldfish in them. I don't know how, how they kept goldfish alive in the shoes for all the time. But he's, he's styling. He's, you know, he's looking fly as he thinks. And he starts walking down the street knowing he's got the confidence. I'm looking good. But the world has passed him by. The world has passed him by. And he realizes, I'm a disgrace. Things have changed. And see, the Cowboys, it feels like they are stuck in the past. I think Mike Zimmer, if they can finally get the deal done, you know the Cowboys are trying to nickel and dime and save every penny. I don't think that Mike Zimmer is a bad hire. But again, the Cowboys are still stuck on old school. I'm still stuck on old school. So when I look back, I'm kind of like that, like Superfly. It's something to me about this whole embrace of your enemy. 
And I know it's free agency because, you know, you play for one team. As DeMario sat here and said, you are an independent contractor. You get a 1099 at the end of the year. It's about getting paid. You're going to do the best that you can for your employer. But at the end, it's you and that company. There is no we in here. We see players cut left and right. By day, you didn't hang out with the guys on the other teams. The Cowboy players and the Washington players, they didn't you know, do podcasts and hang out and work out together. They hated each other. So I still am stuck with the Goldfish platform shoes. I get that. And so Micah Parsons having his edge show from the Super Bowl ain't mad about him expanding what he does. The fact that I'm sitting here is expanding what I do because I'm a carpenter. I'm a father and I'm a husband. And YouTube was just something that I did to get out of my comfort zone. One of the greatest things I've ever done. Made me more confident, made me a better speaker in public. Still butcher the King's English, but I understand. But it's something about Micah Parsons and the enemy that still bothers me. Now, Micah Parsons had Stephen A. Smith on his show. And Stephen A. Smith points out what pissed him off about Dak Prescott. Now, I haven't seen the whole Edge thing in the whole time that he had Stephen A. Smith. This is an excerpt from it. But see, the thing is, is at least in this clip, it's just about Dak Prescott, even though everybody played bad. And that's where everybody focuses. I get it. You're the quarterback. You're the guy getting the big, big contract and everything else. And so you got to take the bullets. So this is Stephen A. Smith with Micah Parsons. And I'm sure that, that uh, Skip Bayless is kind of pissed because he's not on there. But let's listen to what Stephen A. has to say on his latest dig on Dak Prescott. Let's let's go to the tape. So when we had the officials with the the spot and Dak Prescott kind of went went off and everything else, and he got blowback because he wasn't perfect there, where he basically said, you know, they're they're throwing trash on the referees. Good. Oh my God, that wasn't a perfect statement. So wait a minute, let me see if I got this right. So the people who didn't show up to have a conversation like Micah, who had a shit game, the C.D. Lambs out there who were dropping balls that didn't show up after the game and talk about it, that those are the guys that are going to make us win? That if Dak hadn't shown up, if Dak hadn't shown up, that that would have made it better? Do, do, do I have it right? This is the one that really gets me here. This one right here with Micah and Jordan Love. You got your teeth kicked in by the Green Bay Packers a seventh seed in your own house. And here you are sitting here with the enemy. I picked on, uh, like, show us how you, your growth, how you dissected the game, mm -hmm. what you thought we were in. Um, obviously you made it, uh, some great plays extending with your legs. Mm -hmm. But just dive into what was your strategy, uh, philosophy of how to, you know, break down our defense. Yeah, man, I think that the key for us going into the game was we, we needed to run the ball. That was a huge thing. Obviously, we played y'all the year before, and I felt like we ran the ball pretty well. So, um, just going against y'all, I'm like, I'm not trying to talk, but y'all, y'all linebackers, you know, I think y'all had a DB playing linebacker. Um, I don't know, but like that was our goal was to be able to run the ball, and it was going to set everything else up. And obviously, uh, I think y'all biggest weapon is y'all pass rush, and so um, great DBs over there too, but I feel like they rely on the pass rush, you know what I mean? When you've got a great pass rush, you you thinking the quarterback going to get the ball out of his hands quick. And so we we're able to, you know, take advantage of that by, you know, getting some chips on you, slow you down a little bit. Uh, D. Lawrence, slow him down a little bit. But, man, I knew I was going to have to hang in that pocket, take a couple hits from you, take a couple hits from those guys. Um, but I, the guys we had at, at receiver, man, I, I was confident that they were going to go out there and um, do what they needed to do against y'all yeah, DBs, sure. man. But. Yeah. You know, 
you know, if, if you actually listen to people besides Cowboy fans that, that solely just want to say Dak, you know how many people point out linebackers? Jordan Love just pointed out you had a, a, a DB playing linebacker run the football. We knew we'd be able to run the football. Your defense, it's made the pass rush. We knew to run the football. We knew to run the football. For all those out there that talk about Josh Allen, that he's great, remember what the Buffalo Bills did when they were going downhill quick. They said, Josh, we're changing offensive coordinators and we're changing the philosophy. We're going to run to set up the pass. We're going to take the ball more out of your hands and try and be balanced. We're going to try and control the clock. And I believe Josh Allen had 16 passes, 16 against us. And that formula worked in turning their team around for that season and getting them to the playoffs. It still bothers me that we're just friends. I mean, I, it would be hard for me to punch David Wiley in the mouth. We're friends. We're buddies. If I hate you, it's a little easier for me to want to punch you in the face. Just saying. I'm stuck like Superfly with the Goldfish platform shoes. I know it's a different era than when I grew up. But let's be clear here. The problems we have. Philosophy. We don't run the football effectively. We don't stop the run. And we're soft. That's what needs to be addressed with this team. We are soft. We're not mentally strong. And we get tired and need a nap. Jerry, you have to get somebody here who's going to be a motivator. You have to plug the holes and spend some money. And the players, they got to get in better shape and become mentally tough and have some tenacity. There you go, good people. All right, I got work to do. Got to get this man cave together. We're having a Super Bowl party tomorrow. Hope you guys join in, um, and we'll be watching the last game of the year. I can't believe we are already there. Have a great day, and peace out. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Sports Report.